probably still is a mystery. It is, Hal, and we may never have it unravel. It remains a mystery. It remains puzzling. The murders of Ian Spiro's family in Rancho Santa Fe, the death of Ian Spiro himself. Can I look back at what happened? The official version and the unofficial. This is the Ian Spiro murder puzzle. The uh, initial evidence and the evidence continually points to a murder-suicide. Anyone that really knew them would know that that is the truth. There was no way Ian could have killed his family. He didn't make a lot of friends, but he did make quite a few enemies. You're saying that it was a government hit. That is correct. He was a very valuable asset for in Lebanon because of his contacts. Well, it was more than I've ever had to uh, face. One year later, and the pieces still don't fit. It's uh, too early to call yet. If we uh, really thought it was a murder-suicide, we'd probably end up closing the case out. But there's just so much evidence that uh, we haven't come to any conclusions yet. November 5th, it stunned the exclusive neighborhood in Rancho Santa Fe. Four bodies found in the Spiro home along Avenida Maravillas. I was uh, rather, uh, well, amazed. 40-year-old Gail Spiro shot several times in the head. Her children, ages 16, 14, and 10, also shot through the head. Amazed at the extent of damage that uh, um, I, it was necessary for me to work with. November 6th, investigators announced they're looking for the father. Ian Spiro is missing and is considered a suspect in the murders. We've, uh, I guess, took about uh, four or 5,000 fingerprints from this scene, which is a lot, a lot. November 8th, in a remote area of the Anza Borrego Desert, the body of Ian Spiro is discovered inside his Ford Explorer. Cause of death listed as cyanide poisoning. Investigators' early conclusions, Spiro committed murder, then suicide. November 17th. I don't buy murder-suicide because of what I know about Ian Spiro. British writer and Middle East expert Con Coughlin offers a different conclusion, a Middle East hit squad. If he was going to tell his story, then it would have upset a hell of a lot of people. His story may have been what Spiro knew about the Middle East, specifically the U.S. role in selling arms for hostages. He knew the real story behind the Iran hostage scenario, that we had the hostages taken in Beirut. December 12th. Investigators find what they call a missing link in the Anza Borrego Desert. Ian Spiro's briefcase and luggage, but still no murder weapon. Maybe there'll be something in these briefcases that will convince us that uh, where there's no doubt in our mind that Ian Spiro committed these murders and then he committed suicide. November 4th, 1993, one year later, and the investigation continues. The case is still open. Investigators leaning toward murder-suicide that Ian Spiro killed his family then killed himself. Only one problem with that, those who knew Ian Spiro, who knew him well, say he would never, ever harm his family. Ian and Gail were too much in love, and uh, as a family, they were very, very close. Greg Corton was Spiro's brother-in-law and knew him for some 20 years. And nothing in the world could have made Ian kill his family. But investigators insist murder-suicide is viable and continue to investigate that perspective. We have done some ballistic testing in this house uh, with certain weapons. That means firing the guns firing, inside the house. Firing the guns inside the house just uh, to see what the, the noise level would be and also to try to recreate what might have happened in that house. If it wasn't murder-suicide, if Ian Spiro did not kill his family, then kill himself, who did and why? If you ask who would benefit from uh, Ian's death, uh, I could write a book. The absolute number one suspect in a murder of Ian Spiro would be the Iranian government. Right now, the main suspect would be Rafi Jai, because he, on behalf of, on the, the, on behalf of the U.S. government, Rafi Yatan, a purported Middle East super spy and power broker. According to this memorandum from a Washington, D.C. software firm with Justice Department ties, Etan may have played a role in the hit, all apparently because Ian Spiro knew too much. Now, the memorandum may or may not be accurate. It has been confirmed valid by the parties involved. We tried to reach Rafi Etan in Tel Aviv with no luck. Again, he has not been accused of anything, but the question remains why. Why would anyone want Ian Spiro killed? Well, it may have to do with a videotape. 
and what Ian Spiro knew was on that tape. And tomorrow we're going to take a look at that possibility. There are so many theories out there right now involving drugs, involving international hit squads, mm -hmm. but this theory with the videotape involving the Middle East and hostages and Oliver North and all of those players is one theory we'll look at along with murder-suicide. All right, thank you, Graham. We'll look forward to that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Part two. Right. Susan, that's exactly right. It looks like murder-suicide. That's what investigators say. But friends and family say no, no way. And that's the core of the controversy. Did Ian Spiro go crazy and kill himself and his family, or did someone have them killed? Tonight, a look at the two theories. They filled the headlines, allegations, theories, unanswered questions. Who killed the family of Ian Spiro? We're looking at all theories. There is a, a cover-up, and that's one of the things that, while this investigation is so complex, is so many people are coming forward with so many theories, and we've got to make sure that we look into everything that's available to us before we come to a conclusion. But this was a professional assassination of the entire family. There are two theories that keep resurfacing. First, the theory stated early and often by an side and uh, we haven't come up with any evidence to the contrary but we do have plenty of things to do on the case before we come to a final conclusion but there are problems with that theory how could one man move from room to room killing one person in each of four rooms and apparently no silencer was used a neighbor heard the shots uh, out on the street um, surely the kids would have heard the shots from the very next bedrooms and why cyanide why three days later in the desert but if he would have killed his family, he would have shot himself right in and there, laid down next to his wife and family. Among all the other theories about what happened, one stands out. Now, this is where it gets both intriguing and incredible. A murder for hire, a hit. It could involve foreign governments. It could involve espionage. It could involve international power brokers. And or it could involve the United States government. He was trying to sell the story in Hollywood and also to British media. Theory number two. Again, Ian Spiro is desperate for money. He decides to sell sensitive information to the highest bidder. It's information that might ruin important international figures and damage the credibility of governments. This man had such widespread contacts and dealings with the intelligence world in the West, in the Middle East, that there are all manner of people that, that might have wanted to, to see him uh, taken out. His family is at home on or near November 2nd. A hit squad arrives and forces Ian to leave. Meantime, the wife and children are murdered, each shot at close range to the head in separate rooms. Ian is taken out to the desert where he is also murdered. It is a hit whose characteristics point one direction, the Middle East. During the, the Civil War, there were many instances where whole families were murdered in revenge killings. But why? What was the information that Ian Spiro possessed? You've pretty well got to go back to Ian's involvement with Oliver North in uh, the Beirut hostage crisis. Back to hostage William Buckley, who, before he was murdered by his captors, made a confession on videotape. Ian Spiro was the conduit between the hostage takers and the West. He uh, made a copy of the videotape for himself and handed the original over to uh, U.S. intelligence. The Buckley confession tape, secrets of the Beirut CIA station chief, apparently revealed. And Ian Spiro may have known what was said. Ian said that that tape was uh, his life insurance. Uh, and in the event of his death, uh, we should sell it. Um, it would be worth a lot of money as political dynamite. Explosive, the kind of information that could topple presidents. It covers the whole Iran-Contra scandal. Uh, naming names all the way up to the White House. As unlikely as a government conspiracy may seem, so seems murder-suicide in the case of Ian Spiro. A couple of things to think about. Spiro was receiving threatening phone calls just before the murders. In fact, he was planning on leaving town because of the threats. Spiro told his uncle that if he could just make it through the elections, the presidential elections, he'd be okay. Ian Spiro and his family never did. The case is still open, which means the investigation is still on, so the theories are just that. Well, you've been through weeks and weeks of this investigation. Any final thoughts? Well, first of all, we don't even know if that tape still exists or maybe there's more than one copy. Also, 
Uh, many, many people are afraid to talk about this story or, or this case. Mm -hmm. Family, friends, people who live in Rancho Santa Fe have uh, suddenly shut up. They're very much afraid. They're afraid for the lives. They're afraid for their families' lives. In fact, I've been warned to, quote, be careful for what it's worth. Mm -hmm. Good story. Thank you, Graham. tide of sorrow. Some of the solutions to the epidemic are obvious, some expensive, and others are controversial. Can we teach the very young to swim? The YMCA, an organization that has been teaching swimming lessons for 102 years, says no. From age three on, the YMCA offers swimming lessons teaching such skills as kicking, paddling, propulsion through the water, holding of breath, and climbing out of the pool. The program for infants under the age of three, however, doesn't try to teach these skills. Aquatic director Randy Topps explains. The six month to um, three year is the infant program. It's basically a water orientation program. Especially with the younger ones, six months to a year, we don't expect them to learn how to swim. We are working on teaching the parents how to teach the children as they develop teaching the parents safety aspects, how to keep the children from jumping into the pool, reminding them that they need to watch the children by the pool, locking the doors around the pool, teaching the parents how to teach the children how to use the personal flotation life jackets, that type of thing. Our feeling is that a six-month-old isn't going to have the decision-making capabilities to follow, you know, 